We're back here live at Dell World 2012, Austin, Texas. End of day two is coming to a close here. Dell World's second annual um, end user customer conference there and moving from the PC to enterprise uh, world. This is Silicon Angles program theCUBE. We've got the events to start to see from those. My co-host Dave Vellante is here with wikibon.org and we have a special guest here, CUBE alumni and always knowledgeable, great content machine himself, travels the world. Ray Wang, uh, analyst and founder, CEO of Constellation Research. Ray, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> what a way to cap out the year. You guys have been on fire. I got to say, you know, I'm kind of humbled here being with you two, because you guys both hit the uh, Dell social media top influencers, uh, you know, leaderboard, and I, I was nowhere to be found, so I mean, maybe I should just step out. It looks like they're finally out. getting the influence <laughs> algorithm right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. I think I like that. <laughs> 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 They only knew how close we really influencer. were. Ray, you got a good year too, as yourself. I mean, Constellation's growing, you're adding more people. Um, you've worked really hard, and we've been following you because we've kind of been making our bones together in the business of uh, this second generation, um, disruptive, direct business model, social uh, analyst, media press, so uh, congratulations. Um, as it comes to a close for the year, what's your observations of what's going on in the industry and how Dell is positioning right now? I mean, Yeah, we see this huge opportunity within Dell to actually go from selling technology, services, software, products, but to focus on outcomes. And it is very interesting walking into the hall to see this big sign that says business outcomes. And the reason that's happening is customers are not paying for those technologies. They're not paying for the solutions. What they want is peace of mind, they want last mile solutions, and they want vertical. They want, really want vertical solutions and you're seeing that shift so hardware vendors who traditionally had really bad margins um, if you think about system integrators who had traditionally bad margins are saying we need to be in the IP business and you're seeing that right away and so this shift that Dell is working on not just in the cloud not in the vertical solutions that's starting to that's really focused on business outcomes and we're seeing that move very quickly what about I mean it's unbelievable the commitment you see to, to PCs right I mean see wavering in some companies like HP there's no there's no ambiguity you know, with Michael Dell, we are in that business and they're using their scale to drive that into the enterprise. My question to you is, does Dell at some point, I mean they announced today they're back backing off from smartphones, but ultimately do they have to be in that business given its growth? Um, the business is actually dependent on actually having the integration of the devices and the software and the services. They're going down the same model Oracle's going after, but in a very different way. Here's the solution, mm -hmm. take the box, right? That's what you're going to get. So you walk into that healthcare that healthcare area or the public sector pavilion, what you're seeing is, yeah, they're still selling the machine, but it's not the machine. The value add is the fact that I can do EMR, I can do digital records, I can actually connect and collaborate physicians. They can actually bring all that together, and they still need the box for the scale to actually do the delivery. I was um, I was impressed. We have our little tool. John's probably showed it to you, the viewfinder, and and uh, I went into the DevOps vertical. The Dell Dell and Dell World was trending. We had Barton George on and Dave Cote, and it seems like Dell's really putting a big emphasis on that developer community. What do you, what do you, what's your angle on that? No, there's a big emphasis because what the developers are trying to do now is like, if you think about consumerization of IT, what's happening in the marketplace, well, all this stuff is creating what we call best of breed health. Right? And so DevOps is even more important because now the DevOps piece is used to integrate everything, bring it together. The DevOps piece is also used to differentiate in the marketplace. And if you're a company that's really trying to create strategic differentiation, you better have a dev team. You better figure out your DevOps and get that streamlined. Yeah, and Dave, also just a little anecdotal thing that we observe obviously with the data and also being in the business is that if you think about Dell, they actually have a big developer community because their bare metal product, <laughs> their rack and stack approach, you know, these are data center geeks, or, uh, Ray, right? I mean, they're in there, a lot of the early stage stuff, the hacker news market, they buy Dell, because you know why? It's easy to buy, right? So they know Dell, they're comfortable with Dell, so the DevOps, obviously a natural fit for the, you know, the platform as a service dude, the cloud, so, you know, they actually have an interesting, not even sure they even know it, but they actually have a nice alignment with the cloud. Well, and they also have this very interesting OEM business that you might not know about, where they're going in and building extensions. So if you think about airline kiosks, a lot of those have Dell inside them. Think about anything that actually has to be powered actually on a remote kind of area, that's also Dell inside. And so people are actually tinkering with these things like medical device equipment manufacturers, they're using this and taking the OEM business and extending it. Well, what about the, the, what about the ODM business? Seems like Dell is even competing there, do you think? Long term, it can compete with the the ODMs coming out of time. Would you, a lot of people think they you know they come they go, but it feels like the ODM space is is real. 
right now. What, what's your thoughts on that? Well, so long you have the solutions and the value add, right? IBM showed us that, hey, if you got global services, you got a vertical down, you can sell a much higher value um, solution, there's a market for that. So you want to go high value, high margin, or do you go high volume, high value? I mean, all these axes are on value, volume, and you know that's really what's happening right so guys, now. Guys, I got to ask you guys as the analysts, I want to just go down the line here, because I have some pointed questions, because you guys are both deep, and this is, you know, this is, a, this is our independent format. Obviously, we, we're not being paid by Dell to be here, so obviously we, and there's no Dell guests here, so we might as well talk about Dell. Um, Marius Haas was on, obviously great star. We had Michael Dell on, phenomenal group of people. Dell culture, I mean, I like these guys. So, so that being said, Dave, you first. Storage, I mean, come on. Marius, like, we're, he's pumping up storage in pure messaging. I gotta, I gotta highlight that. I wanna get your, I got a red flag on that. What's going on with Dell and storage? Obviously, the compellent was a second place buy from 3Com. And HP, we heard from HP's 3Com and David Scott, those guys last well, week. Well, it's definitely a what, flag in the on. field for the what, comments. I mean, you have to, we have to make that call, right? So, so what, what Dell essentially is doing is they're, they're taking the shares of, of, of NetApp and EMC and saying that, that, that we grew faster than the market. The market actually in storage, according to you know, my sources, is growing you know, slow single digits. And so Dell is losing share right now. Uh, Dell made a move recently. Darren Thomas uh, has left you know, the company as head of, head of storage. And yeah, Darren Thomas is a long time executive. He's got a lot of fans inside of Dell and outside of Dell, but here's the thing. Darren Thomas was the guy who engineered the EMC deal years and years ago. Now that was an OEM deal where they were splitting the margins and profits with EMC. But they're entering a new era. It's software-led era and, and it's a lot of IP and, and, and and I, hey, I know Darren Thomas. It's he's not a, a box moving. He doesn't sugarcoat so things. So you're saying it's not a box moving environment. It's not just a you know slam bam uh, you know OEM yeah, and, deal. And, and, and you know what? The other thing about Darren Thomas, the, he was he was a you know, hard charging executive. He didn't sugarcoat it. And no. so I think I think it's like a coach or manager, a new new baseball team. Marius Haas is going to bring in his own people. You know, we've seen him make some moves, and I think he wants to you know bring in or maybe even promote with him his own you know storage person. That's a, a TBD right now in my opinion. But yeah, I think you're right on. Uh, there's, there's no question there was some heavy messaging going on there. Now having said that, you know, Compellent, uh, uh, Ecologic, Ocarina, uh, Apashore, they got some great assets there, and they just got to, you know, Keep so it, you keep think so? Together. You think they have some good assets there? Oh, you no think question. they got just it's a matter of just cobbling well, together. Here's the thing, What's John, missing? What's here's the missing? thing? Well, they lost out on the three-par deal. When they lost out on the three-par deal, they lost the ability to really go after hard EMC, right? Now, so I've seen this play before. When EMC lost the HP OEM business, it had an HP attack program. EMC didn't lose a, a nickel of market share to HP. In fact, it grew its market share relative to HP. It's got a similar program now going on at Dell, and you know, so, EMC's so Dave, good. Where, it, where is Dell, we, what do they need to work on in that? So they've got some pieces laying around, they have some assets, what do you think? Here's the thing, so Dell basically does deep R&D with its checkbook, okay? I like that strategy, that's fine. And it does its tactical R&D by focusing on integration. Here's the problem, it takes a long time to integrate all these piece parts, so it's just going to take time. Dell has to keep doing what it's, it's doing, stick, stick to its knitting, make sure it gets the organizational pieces right, and I'm confident that Dell will actually start growing again in storage. Ray, I want to ask you, okay, you're following Dell. I want to ask you about big data and services. Obviously, we heard from some of the vendors, obviously, they just addressed the storage piece. Converged infrastructure, big message for them. Okay, they're going to hang their hat on, obviously relevant. I, I think it's got hair on it. I think it's a played saying. I think modern is a better word. You know, it's like, it's kind of old. You think converged. it's 2009 ish? It's John? so <laughs> 2007, <laughs> really. Go back to 2005. <laughs> I mean, it's been talked about for a while, but, but a lot's changed with Flash and now the server market. So, big data has been a big focus. What do you, how do you look at Dell? How would you talk about Dell and their, how they're handling their big data strategy? Well, we actually look at the big data market in three ways. Um, the first one, we actually look at big data business models. And it's something we actually put on Harvard Business Review, I think, earlier this week. And the interesting thing about this is there are content delivery models that are happening. There are people that are the arms dealers. There are people that are using content differentiation, and we're doing content benchmarking, right? And when I talk about that, these information-based business models are changing the way. So a place for Dell to actually play a role is to go deep in a vertical, be able to aggregate that information, and then turn around and actually support the organizations that are doing information-based streaming. And so this means, how do I get benchmark information out there? So take, for example, here's a way you do differentiation. 
if you look at a Google map, today you get Google map with traffic, which is pretty cool, that's nice. But imagine if you get Google maps with traffic tied back to your onboard computer and dash that then ties back to all the fuel stations around you. So when you're down to an eighth of a tank, it knows and it tells you, oh yeah, over there's an Exxon for, you know, it's like $3.27 <laughs> a gallon. Over here is a Shell that's like two ninety nine. You save over $5 by getting gas now. Right, yeah. and I'll make you an offer, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So I think Dell has a role to play in that arms dealer part of that, you know, this, this, this information so on the enablement, So you're talking about on the enablement side, enabling that with infrastructure yes. and solutions. Okay, cool, so I want to ask you about, to take the big data question a little bit further, in a world that we're close to our heart is social media, right? They're selling essentially social media services. Again, it's very early, I don't want to get too nitpicking on like what's available, but it's a strategy. They're selling social business They're selling applications. Solutions. They're selling an that's outcome. That's big data. It's an outcome, yeah, that is, an, that's an implication of big data. They're bringing together a number of software solutions into their model and they're saying, look, let me sell you a social media command center. Right? So you're buying the outcome of having a command center and being able to monitor. There's a probably probably three or four partnerships behind that. You can choose the tools that you want, but it's agnostic to that. Plus they've done it on their own internally. So is Dell's competitor IBM guys or HP? I mean, you're talking about, I mean, the things we just talked through, smells like IBM, you know, go to verticals, have social software, have services. Um, well, storage end, is I mean, still yeah. struggling. I mean, IBM's working on that too. So in a way, is it HP, is it IBM, who's the competitor? But that's always been the battle. Everyone's going for the largest share of the tech wallet. It's the tech budget. So it doesn't matter where it is. So you take a company like Microsoft, it's focused completely on the development side and the build side, and it's going after that market. If you took at an Oracle, they took everything from high value solutions to the database hardware to even BPO. So they're going after that cheese. And then you have IBM. They're hitting all the different areas across this tech budget. But what's interesting though is all the combinations that are going to happen as, this, as the market continues to consolidate. So when you look at what happens in cloud, all that bottom piece doesn't matter more. You don't care what database you're on. You don't care what machine you're on. You don't care exactly what middleware it is. You don't care who's hosting it. You just want an outcome. I got compute power and it's on. So that's yeah. completely And uh, by the way, I'm going to turn it off when it's done. I don't want to pay for it. It's off the cloud. Yes. And I move my workloads across the hypervisor. Yes, exactly. So that is what, so okay, so <laughs> who are they competing with? So is it just a global one big land grab? I mean, is it all like well, a race to got the... A different, like, everybody's got a different game. Some people are going for high volume, some people are going for high value, some people are going for high margin. They've traditionally gone for high volume, right? They've gone for a value in the sense of um, consolidating infrastructure at a lower cost, and that's been the game that they're playing. So they're taking that into the SMB side, they're taking that in heavily on the public sector side. Doesn't mean they're competing with everyone, there's still a lot of room for everybody. Yeah, so in yeah, so Dave, you were talking about scale, so let's come back down. So, yeah, well. so I take what Ray's saying is I kind of agree with him. Dell's kind of like, it's too early to say because it's so much growth opportunity, and yet they're competing indirectly for the, for the share of the wallet, but you said scale. What do you think about the software side of the software-led infrastructure? What's your take on that? I think there's a ways to go there for Dell. You know, I mean, like as I said before, it's, I mean, they've been in this four-year transition, transformation to end-to-end, -to -end, and I think it's key that they've acquired a numerous software assets. I mean, this year alone, I think it's six or seven acquisitions that they've made. You know, many, if not most, are what I would consider software-led. So. It's just, like I say, it's really hard to do that integration. So I, I, would, I would give them very high marks on strategy right now, and, and, and as far as execution, I think actually the execution is, is good, but we just haven't seen it manifest itself in terms of actually, actual market share gain. So I think it, you know, Dell's really still got some work to do there. And as far as the competition, I mean, HP's the competition at scale. They're really the only ones with that, you know, whatever, whether it's the supply chain, 60 billion, you know, HP's got a 60 or 70 billion dollar supply chain, you know, Dell's is probably a little bit smaller than that. Um, so I, I look at those two, you know, I always think, okay, who do they hate the worst? You know, it's HP interesting, it's interesting, interesting. you guys, it's interesting. <laughs> well, There's no, what oh, but what I'm worried more about, I mean, if there's one concern is, you got a hardware company trying to get a software culture, and that's very hard to do. Right? And to yeah, make a software agree. bet is very different than what you do on a hardware bet or a services bet. And software requires a different culture, and I think at times, that's one of the things that they're struggling with is how do I retain the software guy? So do you think, so to consider the, the IBM's transformation from, from what, you know, mainframe really to, to services and software, is your premise that it had enough software juice that it was able to successfully make that transition in software? Or did they have to go through some kind of massive transformation 
like Dell is going to have to do. They went through massive iterations to determine what software they wanted to be in. And then they finally realized they wanted to be in high value, high margin, which means I don't go after everything. I go after some of the key components, but I'm going after things that other people won't be able yeah, to do. Yeah, because it was hanging onto OS2 for a while. It lost out. And then, of course, the Lotus acquisition, Lotus. which is like. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. I mean, a right. lot of talent, but not much to and show. And Tivoli for it right was now. really a, sort of a major milestone for that. Okay, guys, so next question I want to ask you is that going forward, Dell, Dell World next year, what do you think they need to do to execute this next level? Obviously the messaging was good. We heard transformation, the word modern coming out of Michael's mouth, you know, converged infrastructure. Obviously all those things are lining up. Marius, you know, taking reps with the first team right away from HP. Yeah, so it's clear what's going on there. What do they got to do to execute? Can they truly be that solutions company? Do uh, you think they're biting off more than they can chew? Ray, Dave, what do you guys think about this? What I want to see next year is case studies, best practices, customers on stage saying the same thing that they're talking about right now. right? And when you do see that, when the customers are up there saying this is happening, then you know that the strategy is starting to take place. Well, we heard from the one guy, it's like the one thing that better happen next year is they better be number one in servers. Because <laughs> <laughs> they touted the 64,000 servers away from uh, victory. Um, we'll see how they jury the how they jury rig the IDC study. But we'll, we'll, Dave and I will be watching that like a watch. Dave, what do you think about what they need to do for next year? I mean, the hardest part is the PC business is in decline, and they're losing share there, and that's their bread and butter, and their gross margins are 22%. They're a $60 billion company with an $18 billion market cap, and they have $11 billion of cash in their bank. So the core bu business is worth $9 billion. I mean, that's a problem. Dell has to address that from a financial standpoint. I love the fact that they throw off so much cash flow, but there's going to be distractions. At some point, somebody's going to come in and say, hey, they, we can make more money by breaking these guys apart, and Michael Dell's obviously going to fight that. We know that he said on the queue, I, I will invest, invest my yes. own you know, yes. dollars. Yes. So he's serious about that, but you know that is a major problem. They, they've got to solve, they've got to get that value back up. And listen, the street values growth. It doesn't value cash flow. Private equity values cash flow. So they've really got to figure out that growth model again. Now, one way to do it would be to shrink so you can grow again, but Dell doesn't want to do that because it wants to compete in the enterprise with scale, and that's a real conundrum for these guys. So I really want to see the stabilize their, their the, the PC business and then start to shift the margin model toward the enterprise so we can get better than 22% gross margin. Awesome analysis. So, you know, my commentary would be simply, I, first of all, I love both those analysis. I'd agree with it. My analysis would be, they got to make Windows 8 work. I mean, they're betting the ranch on Windows yeah. 8. They have nothing on the mobile side. That's a major drop in their numbers. Um, they're all in. There's no one else, no other, no other girl at the prom at this point. So, you know, Android is not ready. So, Michael's, you know, chins up and they're holding firm on I'm Windows 8. I'm just smiling 8. thinking about Steve Ballmer, the girl on the other end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Touch. <laughs> Kissing the wrong frogs, yeah. as they say. But, no, I mean, Windows 8, we, you know, we're not piston on Windows 8, although there's an argument with our group about it, but it's a jump ball right now. Windows 8, they have a path and they, they have to execute. Microsoft has to come through for Dell, otherwise Dell, we're going to, going to be sideways on the PC business. Dave, to your point. I just think it's hard for, I, it's hard for me to envision an operating system as a catalyst for growth these days, in this day and age. I mean, I think, you know, data and analytics are, Big data, are, are, be and data insights are the catalyst for growth. I don't think it's microprocessors and operating systems. You know, the ARM stuff is kind of interesting, but you know, the, I think the, I said the last OS that really catalyzed growth, I think was Windows 95. I mean, I think the market really has shifted. Okay, so final question, in summary, Starting with Dave, impressions of Dell World uh, all around and just kind of walk away bumper sticker for what's happening here. Well, we were just doing some critical analysis, which is always fun, right? But I have to say, I'm very impressed with this event. Uh, I'm also impressed with Michael Dell's focus on the customer. I mean, that's, you know, he starts there, right? He's always putting the customer first. And I think that's, that's part of Dell's ethos is customer service. They're easy to do business with. And you know, I love the fact that they're paying for their own acquisitions. They're throwing off cash, and they're doing these interesting tuck-ins. So I love the strategy. You know, a lot of people say, come back. I really think it's uh, the, the force and will of a founder who's got the intelligence and the wherewithal and the resources to really affect the transformation. So I, I'm rooting for them, and uh, I hope we're back here next year, John. Ray, what's your thoughts? I, I thought it was great messaging. They're talking about the important things, which are business outcomes. Um, I think that I actually didn't realize that the show was just the second year, just because they didn't invite me the other 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's actually a compliment. Um, so yeah. It's a compliment, it's pretty, it's pretty well run. I like this wagon wheel layout, I think it's very conducive. I hope they keep that, because what it's doing is allowing people to go back and check out all the edges of Dell, and then back to what the core is, which is what's in the middle on those vertical areas. And what I really hope to see is Dell build new business models, because we just you just talked about it. The PC business is dead, 
right? The software business is not really dead, but almost going to be marginalized. Mm. The hardware business is all completely dead in all regards. The services business has very little margin, so they've got to reinvent a new business. And whatever that is, I think everybody's looking at this at the same time. That's awesome. My, my uh, impression is obviously started out from the beginning. Austin's a great city to have an event. Um, it's a much different vibe. It's not Vegas. It's a cool city. They kicked off an amazing music uh, uh, night. Great music, very tight, very enjoyable. Uh, for a guy my age, given that they played all the songs that I knew. Um, so that was great, great vibe, great easy living here in Austin. Um, Del World, in a sense, same thing. I like the messaging of transformation. I love the modern messaging. I think, you know, having Bill Clinton here was an absolute home run. It shows the purpose of Dell. And to me, that motivates employees, that motivates the marketplace, and makes customers feel, you know, and this is a company that's different. I like this company. This company is about the future and about things that are not in the speed and feed. So that was, a, a, I think, a huge win. People might be critical of, of Clinton, but I think the impact of that was just made people realize there's a world bigger than Dell and that Dell's aligning with that. So again, home run. On the product side, Converge Infrastructure, love the modern era, don't like that, but just overall, just they are putting their foot down and saying, we will compete in the enterprise. And uh, again, if they can take that customer focus to them, that's key. Now let's see if they can walk the talk. I love the social mojo they do at the social media data center here, the big operating center. But overall, I thought, fantastic. So, okay. That's a wrap from this uh, analysis, from the breaking analysis, the critical analysis, the, the show analysis here inside the cube. Ray Wang from Constellation Research and Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. This is our TV.TV, .TV, the cube. Our flagship program, the events to the signal from the noise. Thanks for watching. See you later. <laughs>